Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In this week's video, we're touring a traveling musician's bus turned home on wheels, which he calls the jazz wagon. With one of the largest roof raises we've ever seen on a schoolie, CJ has enough space not only for his music studio, but also a lofted bedroom, which is something I don't know if we've ever seen before in a bus conversion. But before we take a tour, if you like these kind of videos where we showcase stories of people living in alternative homes, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new episode. My name is CJ Rislev and this is the Jazz Wagon. seems like a lot of people kind of just want to take a road trip and then they just fall in love with the lifestyle. It was never like that for me. I just, I wanted it. And so I made up my mind when I was 14 that I was going to live in a bus. I was just really set on it. I put $5 in a pickle jar and started saving up. By the time I was 17, I got the money to buy the bus. And man, I'm so lucky I had two just wonderful, wonderful parents. If I know that my parents are going to be supporting me through this, like, it was just easy after that. I just wanted to feel like I could blossom. I could flourish into what I wanted to be. I just didn't want to be stuck. It was in Bemidji, Minnesota that I got this bus. It was like a mechanic. He bought it from a school district. I didn't really think twice about it. Maybe that was just the, my excitement getting the better of me, but it was perfect. It was 2100 Such a cheap price for such a beast of a vehicle. I probably spent maybe 25 on the conversion in total. I overbuilt everything. I just framed everything with two by fours. I didn't even really like know how to work a power tool before then. I just knew what I wanted it to look like and I just got started. My bus is built for me. It should feel like my bus. I wanted a big closet. I wanted an oven. I love cookies. I wanted a record player. I want a place for my instruments. I get to live with that and I get people in here to jam and they just see the space and they're like, oh yes, this is a place for, for music. And I think that's beautiful. I love to share that. In my bus, it's, it's just me and, and my music. I feel really at peace here. This is my 2004 uh, Bluebird International School Bus, full-time home, studio on wheels, magical, magical place. And it's supposed to be like my escape. Just being able to like take it out into the middle of nowhere and just like create and create without anything in the way. It's just like me and all the tools that I need are in there and I, I just make it happen. I painted it white. I actually painted it green first. It used to be called the pickle, and now it is a big, tall, ugly white monstrosity, and it's mine, and I love it. <laughs> I raised it 25 inches. We did this roof raise in three days. I drove the bus to a friend's house in Green Bay because he had the tools. He had a welder and everything and we just jacked it up and we just started going and we had no, not discussed before how tall it was gonna be, but I had already bought the sheet metal for it and it was in four foot by eight foot pieces. And so it was just like, well, why don't we just jack it up all the way so that the four foot piece fits exactly in? And that was literally the reason why. 
And I didn't even think about it at the time. I just was looking at it and like, yeah, whatever, like this is perfect. Now that I've seen all these other buses, I recognize that that's like a beast of a roof raise. Like 25 inches is really unusual. I feel like the average is like eight to 12. You know, people just get a little headroom so they can stand up comfortably. It's a DT 466 International. I hear it's very good. I don't know anything about engines, but I've heard good things and it has not let me down yet. Oh, I love driving. It's the only vehicle I've ever owned, so I'm really used to it. I like, uh, I like being high off the ground. I have my vantage point over all the little cars and they fear and respect me and I get by on the road. So under here, I have this big storage box that I I had a welder friend of mine build and it's just big pieces of, of angle welded together and then I just put the wood in and I keep my three propane tanks under here. That powers um, the stove, the oven, the fridge. My water setup is very simple. I have 12 gallons of water. My solar, I have 880 watts of solar panels on the roof, and then it goes into a 340 amp hour battery. I just got the Starlink, that's very new, but that's a super essential for having internet on the road. So that was pretty much everything there is to see on the outside. I will go ahead and take you inside. So when you live in a bus, you kind of take all the square footage you can get. That's why I put this extra thing in right here. Lecture room for dancing, whatever I need to do. And then I can just lift it back up. It just clicks right into place. Right here is the kitchen, pretty much where we start. I got a bunch of counter space. I have this little counter. This here, this is all just edge glued pine. I just epoxy right over it. I beat the heck out of it and it's fine. It holds really well. I have my whole little like Mixology set, all the bar stuff, my liquor cabinet. I'm really into mixology, making drinks. I like to be like hospitable too. I like to, for people to come to my bus, like, oh, can I get you like a glass of wine? Do you want, want a Bloody Mary? I make a lot of cookies, so I got an oven. That's really important for me. Big drawer of like pots and pans under here. That's where all this stuff is. I got kind of my pantry up in here. Sink is all like a foot pump system. It's literally just a bowl and a copper wire. And then I have my monstrously large fridge. <laughs> my fridge runs off of propane mostly. I have three propane tanks underneath the bus and those each last me about two or three weeks. Plenty of room, more room than I need, honestly. I just eat cookies. Over here is kind of the heart of the bus. Is there like a recording studio on here? Holy shit. Wow, this is pretty dope. I like to say that's the kitchen and this is the kitchen is where the good stuff is cooked up. This is my piano. This is the nicest thing I own. It was literally more expensive than the bus was. And it's where I spend most of my time in here playing this thing. If I'm on an incline, I usually just put this little bungee cord here that holds it open. I got my laptop. I also have a Mac mini mounted underneath the desk, all my music equipment, my speakers. I got a lot of my instruments in here, trombones there, trumpet in the back, two ukuleles. But the desk area is kind of the heart of the bus. This is where I spend most of my time. Moving on, I have a little bathroom here. Pretty simple, I just have a compost toilet. I uh, just built a box basically. It's all set up so that if I ever need to put a shower in, I can. I haven't honestly felt the need to yet. I'm usually not far from a, a shower source. This is my ladder, it goes up to the bed. The bed is a king size bed. <laughs> Very obnoxious for a single person, but it's great, I love it. These are all the states that I've been to on the mat back there. And then I got the skylight, which is pretty awesome. I remember thinking like I was looking all over for a video of somebody doing the loft. So I wanna see somebody else that has a loft bed just like mine where I have the couches underneath and I almost wanted that to confirm what could be done. And then I realized I don't need to see it. I know it can be done. I just, I felt like I needed 
somebody else do it first. I needed like permission. And I guess eventually you just got to give yourself permission. <laughs> so it's just kind of enough space to like lay up here comfortably. If I'm actually sitting against this back wall, sometimes I'll like read a book up here and my head just pokes perfectly in the skylight. And so I'll be here and I'll just kind of sit. I can sit against this wall comfortably. It's like just enough space. It is cozy. I could fall asleep right now. Mm. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> this is where everyone sits when I have people over. I really like the idea of an L couch. It just feels very communal. Makes it feel like everyone's hanging out. I got the Cubic Mini over here. Keeps me toasty warm. All these couches have storage inside. That's mostly, I just put tools and stuff in there. I got a record player. It's usually always going, mostly jazz tunes. There's a couple little like nooks and crannies. I have these drawers in here where a lot of like my, my bathroom stuff and kind of card games, board games go. There's this little nook in here. I just keep this table that I set up just to have breakfast and stuff. I really like clothes. I like to be well-dressed. <laughs> it's nice to feel spiffy. It's important for the, the whole jazz aesthetic too. This community is one unlike any I have ever known. And I really, I truly wish it for every person. There are people just like you doing this. And you have to go into it with an open heart and an open mind and be yourself and surround yourself with people and it will be okay. You never get to the end of your life and you're like, oh, I wish I would've just worked one more overtime shift to buy that jet ski. You know, you get to the end of your life and you're like, I wish I would've spent more time with my mother. I wish I would've told that person how much I love them. I wish I would've seen the Grand Canyon. Fundamentally, I think my ideals shifted. What's really valuable is the people you meet and the memories you make and the things that you get to experience and the places you get to see. It's so different and it's so fulfilling. I believe the ring Call me if you want to. I don't mind it if you wake me. Take a while for sleep to take me. And I don't care what you are. You better not leave yourself behind. Ooh. I'm not feeling very brave. When you call me. Talk like that a couple hours in a play doesn't seem so bad. But why are you so damn far away? No one says we're supposed to be, so I just don't feel right to me. But I'm thirsty for the truth, so 